object-oriented design patterns. Why do we actually need them? The usual explanation is that depending on the problem that you are facing, some patterns may prove more or less suitable for a particular problem. So the argument being, for example, if you need to dynamically construct objects, then factory pattern is suitable. If you need to, at runtime, alter a particular ad algorithm, then strategy pattern is useful. But I've recently come across a different explanation that I find is much more interesting in regards to why we actually need design patterns, or let's say why design patterns is even a thing. So think of it this way. To, to talk about why we need design patterns, you need to ask yourself the question, which language am I actually working in? So we're going to simplify the world and only talk about two dimensions of languages. We're gonna talk about functional languages and object-oriented languages. But also we're going to talk about whether they are statically typed or dynamically typed. So in other words, that puts us in a situation where we have four different kinds of languages. In other words, we have object-oriented dynamically typed languages, we have object-oriented statically typed languages, we have functional dynamically typed languages, and functional statically typed languages. Easy, right? <laughs> so simplifying a bit too much, we can think of it this way. Dynamically typed languages are more flexible, while statically typed languages are more safe. In other words, I mean they are type safe. So static checking is able to find errors much more easily in statically typed languages. Whereas in dynamically typed languages, you actually have to run the program in order to see whether you have what would be in a static language uh, a compilation error. So if we look at all of these four categories of languages, most design patterns exist because statically typed object-oriented languages need them in order to achieve the same flexibility, runtime flexibility, that all of the other languages have for free. Remember, disclaimer, I'm not saying that this is the only reason we have patterns. It's multifaceted. But it seems to me that this is a very a large reason or a very great reason for the existence of these patterns. So let's recap to re really nail this in. So statically typed object-oriented languages need patterns to achieve the same flexibility that functional languages and dynamically object-oriented languages have for free. If this seems confusing, let's talk about an example. Probably the easiest example is strategy pattern. It's probably also one of the easiest patterns. Strategy pattern essentially is that you want to vary an algorithm at runtime. So I guess the canonical example is sorting, right? You may want to sort using different algorithms and you don't want to at compile time couple yourself to a particular sorting algorithm so you can, instead of runtime, choose your sorting algorithm. If you think about this, if we have a statically typed object-oriented language and you have a method called sort, how would you inject uh, an algorithm to the method sort? The short answer, of course it's multifaceted again, but the short answer is you can't. But with strategy pattern, you can. So what we do is that we create a simple interface, say an I sorting algorithm that only has, uh, say, one method called compare or called sort or something like this, and then we pass anything that is uh, an I sorting algorithm, right? Which means that we've essentially created an interface that wraps one method, right? And or we've created a contract for having a single method with a particular signature. If you think about the other end of the spectrum, a functional language. Of course, that's for free in a functional language because in functional languages, you have higher order function. And a strategy, in this case, an algorithm is a function. So you have a function called sort and to the function sort, you pass your particular sorting algorithm. So that's for free, it's built into the language. And if you look at statically typed functional languages, then if, I'm, if I oversimplify, then the function signature is a type. And in that case, the sorting algorithm simply needs to have 
a certain type, but as long as it's a function that corresponds to that type, then we can pass in any, uh, any sorting function of our wishing. So again, it's for free in both kinds of functional languages. In dynamically typed object-oriented languages, it's also for free, but the point is again that we are then losing static typing. Let's do the whole same discussion for, for factory pattern. So factory pattern exists because we want to dynamically, because we want to be able to at runtime change the type of an object we are instantiating. In other words, depending on different scenarios, instantiate objects of different kinds. For example, it might also be that we want to instantiate using some, some kind of complex logic or passing it a complex series of arguments or something like this. But essentially that we at runtime want to vary object instantiation. If we only look at the if we only look at the scenario where we want to vary the type, right? Say that you have cats and you have dogs, and then you have an animal factory, and the animal factory instantiates either cats or dogs, depending on some scenario. Now, in a dynamically typed object-oriented language, we don't, to the same extent, we don't really need a factory because classes are objects and objects you can pass around. So in other words, instantiation, if you think about Ruby, for example, you can pass the class as an instance and then call the new method on that instance. In other words, instantiating an instance of the class. So again, that means factory pattern comes for free in a dynamically typed language. But again, the point is that we've lost type safety. So to have that kind of behavior in a statically typed language, we need factory pattern. And then we can have dynamic object creation, but still uh, maintain type safety. <clears throat> and again, in functional languages, that's sort of for free. I'm saying sort of because there's no super obvious translation to, to functional languages because we don't oftentimes don't have classes in the same sense so the analogy is kind of difficult to, to pass over but again higher order functions so you can have a function that takes a function and returns a function so you can in other words you can get a function back from a function and I guess that would some, somewhat be equivalent of a factory returning an instance of a class dynamically so to me this seems to really be the reason why we have patterns and why patterns are so important, have become so important, right? So in other words, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's a fallacy, but we should be wary when people are trying to bring the classical the object-oriented design patterns in, into dynamically typed languages, because it's not always obvious that they have uh, an application. Again, we have to ask ourselves, is it because it somehow helps structuring the code to make it more, say, semantically readable or understandable to essentially help with cohesion? Or is it because we're trying to solve something that we, we think is unsolvable otherwise? Because it seems to me that most of these problems are actually completely solvable for free, quotation marks for free, or rather by, uh, naturally, in dynamically typed object-oriented languages. Okay, that's it. Quick recap we've been talking about functional languages, object-oriented languages. And both of these can either be statically typed or dynamically typed. And in regards to the classical, classical object-oriented design patterns, most of the time you don't need them at all in functional languages because it's for free. And most of the time you don't need them at all in uh, dynamically typed languages. But in statically typed object-oriented languages, we need them to achieve the same kind of flexibility that we have in these other languages. <clears throat> but the question is, of course, type safety. So it seems to me that probably people have introduced design patterns in order to be able to stay in the statically typed world while still gaining the benefits of dynamic typing. So that's it for today. I've got a whole nother interesting discussion around visitor pattern, but let's discuss that in another video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Now, now.